tonight. You know Fark. You love Fark. Now me. Today on X-Play, Rock'em Sock'em Robots in One Must Fall. Tell me, baby. Because it was inevitable, the American Idol game. And how bad can Star Trek Shattered Universe be? Prepare for impact. It's game time. Just seven cents a day can make a difference in their lives. It's Adam Zessler, Rand Moore, Good Web. A real minimal difference. Hello and welcome to X Play. On today's show, we have strategy. Yes, and Star Trek. Yes, my fellow nerds, glorious Star Trek. Mm, plus, an RC car game. And to top it all off, the officially licensed American Idol game. Oh, the sweet, sweet suffering. Feel yeah, the pain. And we promise that one of today's titles will turn out to be one of the worst games we have ever reviewed. Now, why would we hype this fact? I'll tell you why. Everyone likes to watch a train wreck. Yeah, they're fun. But we kick things off with a hot and timely topic. Robot on robot violence. That's right. We have a robot fighting game for the PC. Whoa, well, uh, did she just say a fighting game for the PC? Yes, she did. Okay, if you didn't know, no one makes fighting games for the PC anymore. No one except Diversion Entertainment. Because they're crazy. Mm -hmm. The even weirder news is this is an online multiplayer fighting game. So, yeah, you can meet up with the other four people who are playing fighting games on the PC online and duke it out. This is our review of the dramatically titled One Must Fall Battlegrounds. Apparently, no one told the developers at Diversions Entertainment that you're not supposed to make fighting games for the PC. But here we are, reviewing One Must Fall Battlegrounds. And the results are interesting. First, pick your pilot. Some are strong, some are fast, but all of them look goofy. Then, pick your giant robot. These won't win any awards for originality. Pyro shoots flames. Mantis shoots bugs. I thought the Jaguar would shoot little kitties, but instead he uses another weapon common to the big cat family, a particle beam. Like I said, interesting. You'll notice that the robots are really, really shiny. Look at that. And that. They're all like this. In fact, the whole game looks like it OD'd on turtle wax. The large combat arenas hold up to 16 opponents and feature power-ups to help you fight. Some arenas have interactive elements that involve some kind of pain, like large spikes or huge fiery bowling balls. Look, I made one fall. Get it? <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, we're here to beat the crap out of other robots, and happily, there's a lot of that. The game features a unique combo system that emphasizes linked moves, attacks and blocks that flow naturally from one to the other. However, a PC keyboard is a lousy way to control a fighting game. Even with a gamepad, the game still feels sluggish, but you get used to it. Although there is a single player mode, the meat of the game is fighting online, and the regulars who play online will hand you your ass over and over again. Still, with a bunch of opponents and a smooth connection, the game can be a blast. But there's some problems here. First, it's hard to find people to play with. I never found more than a handful. There just aren't that many folks playing this, at least not yet. Hello? Hello? Will anyone, anyone beat me up? Second, the over-the-shoulder camera angle makes it hard to know where your enemies are, and evading attacks isn't nearly as effective as it should be. Where am I? Ah, I'm the one getting pummeled. Interesting. Finally, even with the latest patch, this game crashes a lot. I'm not sure how many times because I only have so many fingers and toes. I'm sure there are folks out there playing without any problems, but I wasn't one of them. <laughs> one Must Fall Battlegrounds is a decent attempt to bring a fighting game to the PC, and it's rough around the edges in a lovable kind of way. But muddy controls and crashing bugs drag this game down. We give One Must Fall Battlegrounds an interesting two out of five. But trust me when I say you'll be spending more time fighting or crashing computers than fighting other players. Stop whining, Adam. Ooh. It's Star Trek time. Yay! 
Oh yes, Morgan and I are very excited when we heard that the new Star Trek game takes place in the original Trek's alternate universe. Yes, you know the, the one from Star Trek episode 39, Mirror, Mirror, where Captain Kirk is evil and he has an eye patch and Spock has a goatee. Because nothing said evil in the 60s like facial hair and a visual handicap. Here's a review of Star Trek Shattered Universe. These are the voyages of the Starship Excelsior. Its ongoing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where none have gone before. Well, let's see, where are we going today? We have an evil checkoff. Welcome to the eye of the storm, old comrade. You can tell he's evil because of his jaunty yellow sash. We have endless internal monologues by George Takai. Since its properties seem to have been responsible for us through Terran space, I fear we have not seen the last of Commander Chekhov. We have a plucky little fighter that can take down an Enterprise-class starship. And we have lots and lots of this. In Star Trek Shattered Universe, USS Excelsior captained by Mr. Sulu. All hands, prepare for impact. Get sucked into the Mirror Universe, where the Federation is evil. And the Romulans and Klingons are relatively nice guys. You're a nameless combat pilot who has to fly around shooting wave after wave of small fighters, usually to defend the Excelsior, or you may have to complete some mindless mission like move from point A to point B, collecting resources or whatever. Follow your radar to navigation point three. But all these cliched mission objectives wouldn't be so bad if the game actually played well. First, your weapons are lame. Your photon torpedoes are useless on anything except the starship, so you're stuck smashing both the phaser and laser bolt buttons at the same time, and they both suck and are hard to aim. Five, four, three, two, one. You're not helping! And just when you think you're getting somewhere, they suddenly change objectives on you. After several waves of boring dogfights to clear the path for the Excelsior, you'll suddenly have to single-handedly assault a major capital ship, which can kill you in a few well-lamed bursts. Why your tiny little ship is taking on huge starships with no support from the Excelsior is never explained. Maybe Captain Sulu has it out for you, but dying, of course, means having to play the whole damn mission over again. I order you to surrender your vessel. Your vessel? And most of all, the game lacks personality. It does have George and Walter. Oh, Walter, I kid, you look very nice in your sash. But it doesn't have much else. Star Trek Shadow Universe gets a one out of five. Maybe now it will boldly go away. Oh yeah, and you know, we forgot to mention in the review that it crashes. Two. Yes, that's an added bonus. Shattered Universe needed lock-on aiming from the get-go because it is impossible to play when you can't hit anything. So tedious. Plus, Chekhov was wearing a sash of evil. Now, a sash says I'm fashionable and relaxed, but it doesn't say evil. Now, this game makes me embarrassed to wear a Starfleet badge and carry a tricorder. Is the game to do that? Mm-hmm. Coming up! Size doesn't matter in RC Cars, the game! Roswell, New Mexico, 1947. UFO wreckage is discovered and seized by military personnel. It is speculated that the alien technology recovered has been applied to modern day innovations. To this day, the government denies any existence of alien technology. Financing available on Alienware systems. NVIDIA! Excuse me. Hi, can I see that laptop? Sure. You can access the internet all around your house. It's wireless networking. Did you say... Wireless? I'm free, I'm free. Not just a puppet on a string, no ties to anything. Find your freedom. Have us install a wireless network in your home. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Best Buy.
I'm about to blast. Cars, cops, and lock the door. There's two crimes and I'm taking yours. To the store in a pickup, masking gun. Guess what? It's a stick up. Give me all your money, honey. True crime, streets of LA. Rated M for mature. Out my The new GMC Envoy XUV. Multifunctional. Adaptable. Retractable. The revolutionary Envoy XUV. The sport utility with more utility. Only at your GMC dealer. Professional grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. The stage is set. The players are ready. And weeknights at 11, 10 Central, the battle begins. Don't just watch X play. Play along live with Tech TV Hyperactive. To play, register at techtv.com slash hyperactive. Then watch X play weeknights at 11, 10 Central. Log on and play. Answer the questions. Chat with other players. Win cool prizes. And look for your name on the leaderboard live on TV. Tech TV Hyperactive. Only on Tech TV. Because Denny's wasn't hiring Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Yeah, I was bummed about that. Yeah. Welcome back to X-Play. Racing games, they can be big and shiny, like to Project Gotham. Or allow you to fine-tune your vehicles, like Need for Speed Underground. Or they can shrink down the vehicles and make an RC car game. Because there are a ton of people who'd want to play that, right? Right? Can I get a witness? Here's a review of the appropriately titled RC Cars. RC cars. Those annoying little radio controlled toys that have terrorized parents and innocent bystanders for years and are now available on your PC. Why anybody would want to play a game that simulates an already simulated activity is beyond me. But somebody somewhere thought it would be a good idea. So there you have it. Now one of the biggest problems with Whiptail Interactive's RC cars for the PC, well, besides the box car, is the lack of variety. The 10 tracks and three different cars add up to a pretty short game, which might be a blessing in disguise. The tracks are a mix of on and off road locations. In each race, whether on the beach or through a military base, racers must cross a series of checkpoints. Most tracks have real world obstacles to impede your progress. There are stationary elements like rocks, walls, and oceans, which can be avoided with proper steering and judicious use of the jump button. Hmm, easier said than done. Oh, cute, we're stuck on our back like a little sea turtle. There are also angry pedestrians, girls in bikinis, and wildlife that impede your progress. Now, I'm not sure if this is a coyote or a beach dingo. There is no damage model. However, more dramatic crashes will return your car to the last checkpoint cross. Online play is available, as well as two-player split-screen mode on the same PC. RC Cars is not a difficult game, but control can be a problem, and there is no way to adjust the physics. Just like in real life, these RC Cars can be a pain in the ass to control. Thank the good lord, the caliber of your opponents can be adjusted, and the easy setting will allow the spazziest driver to remain in contention, despite repeated trips to the bottom of a pool or kicks across the beach. As for the music, we will let you be the judge yourself. Hey, if generic rock and techno fair is your thing, turn up that volume, dude. Now, from the review so far, you might think that we're giving this title a one. But the graphics aren't bad, and the interface is functional. Plus, there is something strangely compelling about driving around and bumping into toes of the beach, babes. So compelling that we bump up our sea cars to a two out of five. Let's take another look at the RC Cars box art. Wow. Yeah, it's a woman in a bikini being menaced by rogue RC cars. It's actually terrifying. Wow, so tiny cars leaping over a grown woman in a swimsuit. You know, I still don't feel like buying it. Well, that's a relief. I guess that proves that sex doesn't sell. Well, yeah, unless you're talking about Final Fantasy X2, DOA, Beach Volleyball, DOA, Sexy Beach 2, there's Tomb Raider, Summer Heat, Beach Volleyball, Mrs. Pac-Man, there's a couple others. Up next, a strategy card game called Concept. The nerds are gonna love it. You want your own dedicated web server? 
For only $99 a month, go to Survey Beach. I host sites for five of my friends, and it pays for itself. My server has almost unlimited email space, 60 gigs. The network's awesome. I host my game server there. They host your Linux or Windows server on a Cisco network, backed by a great uptime guarantee. Believe it. Check it out. Serverbeach.com. You want your own dedicated web server for only $99 a month? Server Beach. If someone wrote a book about your life, would anyone want to read it? Navy, accelerate your life. It comes down to this. I gave you both the internet to stop the fighting around here. You two owe me a favor. Someday you're gonna have to repay that favor. Even if what I ask seems unpleasant. You understand? Okay, okay. Sure, Dad. Get SBC Yahoo DSL for $29.95 a month. Connect two or more computers with SBC Home Networking for just $50. <laughs> out of the Hong Kong underworld is to go back in. Jet Li in Rise to Honor, rated T for teen. Stop jumping on the bed. Stop jumping on the bed. <laughs> You'd be happy too if you saved up to 75% on your hotel. Fly, sleep, drive, cheap. What if all-wheel drive had brains? Constantly adjusting. Giving you the handling of rear-wheel drive. And the traction of all-wheel drive. But only when you need it. Intelligent all-wheel drive that changes with the weather. Available on the Infiniti G35. Once again, the agony and the ecstasy. Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. Hey, Amy. <gasps> Welcome back to X-Play. Here at X-Play, we've learned that sometimes developers give their games stupid titles. Mm. Grim Fandango, stupid title, good game. Beyond Good and Evil, it's a book by Nietzsche, people. Are you going to call the sequel The Will to Power or The Gay Science? Romance of the Three Kingdoms. There's no romance, just stabbing. And one of my favorites, K1 Grand Prix. It sounds like a racing game. Turns out to be a fighting game. Yeah, and now, joining the stupid, stupid, stupid title ranks, Cold Sept. Cold Sept. Yeah. yeah, I can't figure out what it's about either. Here's our review. Cold Sept, the book of creation and destruction. Before you get too excited about the pretty graphics, let me point out that Cold Sept might be the first game in history where your sidekick is a staff with a human head. Mm-hmm. Kind of curbs your enthusiasm, huh? Fortunately, this game has some good points. A lot of good points, actually. Cold Sept is basically a cross between Monopoly and a collectible card battle game. You start the game with a deck of 50 magic cards. You move around a game board and claim territories by summoning a monster from your deck to guard the area. If another player lands in your territory, he either has to defeat your monster with one of his own, or fork over some of his mana. That's the currency of the game. Other cards in the deck will let you cast magic spells, or outfit your monster with special items prior to battle. And where does Mr. Stickhead fit in? Well, he's part of a single-player quest that has you saving the world from a bunch of bad, bad people. So, of course, besides the fun inherent in reading through a bunch of text messages, it's really pretty stupid. So, the less we say about that, the better. If you own a bunch of like-colored spaces all next to one another, you'll be able to charge the other players a whole lot of mana. You can also spend your mana to upgrade your spaces <clears throat> houses and hotels, <clears throat> and then charge even bigger tolls. The card battles are mostly easy to understand until you start getting some of the more rare and powerful cards. The problem is that it's just hard to figure out the best way to use them. 
It also doesn't help that the game mostly looks crappy. This looks like an 8-bit game, and there's really no excuse for this kind of presentation anymore. What are far more attractive are the beautiful hand-drawn pictures on the 500 cards themselves, and similarly pleasing, the way the cards literally do battle with one another. It's quirky, but it works. So, with goofy, hard-to-peg gameplay, inferior graphics, and hands down, one of the worst names we've ever heard, we're pretty sure that Coldcept isn't going to sell very well. And that's too bad, because the game's accessible enough for the newbie, yet deep enough for the hardcore. We're giving Coldcept a decent 3 out of 5. The defense was too strong. Now let me tell you, the adrenaline really gets pumping when you're playing cards, violently attacks someone else's playing cards. It's just too much excitement for me. Actually, Coldcept is a little less like Disgaea with cars. Of course, that was also another decent title marred by crappy graphics. Yes, Disgaea, another title that tells me nothing about the game. Whatever happened to simpler times when the boxing game was called boxing and the hockey game was called hockey? Well, see, those were simpler times, but the graphics were simpler, too. The only way you could tell that the big pixels in it were boxers was because it was called boxing. See? We've come full circle. That's deep. Mm. Looks like I have the final say. In a moment, we prayed it would never come to this. American Idol, the game. What's the latest from Gateway? It's our cool new notebook with a mobile Intel Pentium 4 processor M for only $899.99. That's right, it might just be time to get into a smart gateway notebook that's got all the power of a desktop and the space-saving portability of a laptop. It has a CD burner DVD combo drive and 256 megabytes of RAM, all for under $900. And when you order now, you'll save $250 and we'll ship it for free. So call 1-800-555-2081 today. To be honest, when AOL sent us the top speed technology, we were a little confused. The guy said that this thing makes things go faster. It says top speed on it. Technology. It must go on a bike somewhere. And then my father had an idea. Hey, genius, it's from AOL. Why don't you just try it on a computer? That's right. AOL 9.0 with top speed technology built right in is for surfing the internet faster. It's not for choppers. AOL 9.0 with top speed technology lets you supercharge your internet experience. So web pages load up to five times faster. Call today for our special limited time offer with no credit card required. Get AOL 9.0 with top speed technology free for 45 days. That's right, 45 days and nights surfing the web at top speed. Plus, all of AOL's other great features included with your 45-day free trial. Boy just needs to get to the get. Nice idea, Pop. So get top speed technology for your computer. Call 1-800-245-6545 today. We were over our heads in credit card debt and looking for a way out. A number of companies said they would help us, but they were only interested in charging huge upfront fees and putting us further into debt. Credit Guard of America was different. Credit Guard of America won't put you further into debt. As a nonprofit service, we've helped thousands of people for over 11 years. We work with you and your creditors to reduce your monthly payments so you can get on with life. Credit Guard of America cut my monthly payments in half. They cut my interest rate from an average of 23% to 8%. Some even went to zero. I'll be out of debt in four years instead of 20. Credit Guard of America saved me over $13,000 in interest fees alone. Call now to reduce your monthly payments. Cut the interest rates on your credit cards by up to half and get your unsecured debt paid off years earlier. Don't you owe it to yourself to work with a real nonprofit service? Call now to find out how to receive a free credit report. Certified counselors are standing by. Call 800-213-4632. Amazing. Engaging. Always entertaining. You're watching Tech TV. Once again, the sorrow and the pity. Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb. You know, that time I don't know which one I am. <laughs> Welcome back to X-Play. Oh, okay. You waited all episode long, and now the moment is finally here. Ta-ta! Tightness in the chest, shortness of breath, stabbing, shooting pain in the left arm. Yep, it's time to review the American Idol game. And Adam and I decided to give it the American Idol treatment. Mm -hmm. Here's our review. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. Yo. All right, you guys are gonna love this. So, what have you got? I've got American Idol, the game. 
Great, well, let's see it. All right, here we go. See, so it's, it's just like American Idol, the, the show. I mean, you could go through all the auditions and the heats, and do you just follow along and press the buttons? Uh, so, but when do we sing? And do you use a microphone? No, you don't sing. See, this is American Idol. You just press the buttons, or you use a dance pad. <laughs> no, wait, wait. The, the, there's, the, there's actually more. This game is really good. Trust me. Sure it is. Let's see. You follow the icons that move toward the center of the screen. Occasionally, you'll have to perform some quick dual button presses. And that's it. You're judged on your reflexes. Yeah, let's go over this again. This is American Idol, a game based on a singing competition, and you don't sing. This is just despicable. Randy, Paula, and Simon are here, but most of their comments are considerably toned down. I'm sorry, there's bad, and then there's you. You just weren't up to par today. I don't think you've convinced any of us. I really don't think you'll be back again in the next round. I've actually got friends who snore better than you sing. Dreadful. Okay, that's a good one. And pardon me, I don't mean to be rude, but visually, this game is a disaster. What's with the weird face scratching? The cell shaded characters look like they were intended for the original PlayStation or Nintendo 64. Honestly, this game is all about playing dress up. Here's my character. And just like the TV show, I'll be judged partially on appearance and image. In fact, you could spend a lot of time in wardrobe finding the right look. Congratulations, you've just unlocked a bonus costume. Oh god, that one is so tacky. There is a karaoke mode, but look, you sing to the screen and you're not judged. People, do yourself a favor and sing to your own tunes on your own time. If you the only time we had fun with this game is when we put the controller down and let the contestants croon off key. Did, uh, you guys, did I mention the two player option and the videos you can get of Ruben and Clay? Okay, that's enough. Um, you know, I really don't know how to say this and your presentation was great and all, but I really can't give this game a good rating. Yo, yo, dog, dude, come on, this is American Idol the game. You mean to tell me there's no singing? This is absolutely the worst game I have ever seen in my entire life. I'm giving it a one out of five. I can't believe I'm giving it a one. One out of five. Yo, dude, one out of five. You guys are wrong. This is a great game. You'll see. Get out! Out! <sighs> Next. If my dog had that kind of talent, I'd shave its ass and shoot it. Would you make an American Idol game with no singing? That's the whole point. And what the heck were you saying about your dog? That's not important. What is important is that this is one of the worst games we've ever played. It's an abomination. Speaking of abomination, it's time for the viewer mail. Yes. Today's viewer mail is from Christine, Gary, and Zach in Nevada. They write, we saw your review of Silent Hill 3, and now we're interested in the series. What's the difference between the original and the recently released greatest hits versions of Silent Hill 1 and 2? Sellers keep advertising that the originals are better for some reason. Why? Okay, here is the deal. The only difference between the original and the greatest hits version of Silent Hill are that the labels say greatest hits. Yeah. Seriously, that is it. Okay, but now collectors prefer the game without that greatest hits label, so for them, the original is better. But that's it. Otherwise, the gameplay is absolutely the same. Okay, now there is one exception. That is the re-release of Silent Hill 2 Restless Dreams on the Xbox. That game does have slightly improved graphics. Yeah, and extra gameplay with the Maria character. But the audio has a bug that throws the lip syncing off, so it's kind of a win-lose situation. So, I hope that helped. Maybe it didn't. And by the way, actually, the release date for Silent Hill 4 is going to be this year. So, prepare to get freaked out all over again. 
soon or maybe later, but we, we and will. And if see. you really want to get freaked out, you can always go to our website. Yeah. We have full reviews of everything you've seen here today. Any other game you want to check out and uh, other well, fun extras. Yeah, you can see pictures of me, and that scares a lot of people. <laughs> it scares my mom. It scares Morgan. It, it scares it's Morgan, it, by who I think gouges his eyes out. It's at techtv.com slash xplay. We hope you don't gouge your eyes out. Oh, no. Good night.